Hi everyone, it's Jeanette here from The Sewing Studio and I thought I would share with you today a little scrap project that I've been doing here with um, some of my leftover one and a half inch uh, pieces and I think these were sort of leftover pieces from sort of, I think it was a layer cake, I was going to say a charm pack but I think it was a layer cake. Um, but before we get into the demo, I've been having a little look around because my brain exploded a little bit when I started doing this. Now this is a, a recreation of a little cushion I'd done before with little heart appliques on it and that was also from scraps. Um, and I know Katrina in her postcard video has said, we've decided this year is the year of the scraps. We need to do some projects to get in control of our scraps. Um, so I was recreating this one. But as I said, my brain exploded when I started to do this because it was coming up with all sorts of different versions that we could do this in. So you could do Halloween, we could do Christmas, we could do autumn, you could do patriotic. It's just, there's no, it's limitless really. Um, so I've been having a little look around the shop at some of the fabrics and, and particularly Halloween. I think my next one I'm going to do, I've started prepping a Christmas one, is going to be a Halloween one. So I was having a look at some of our new in fabrics and I'm just going to move that out of the way for the minute and put this one in um, because this is a lovely fabric called Hey Boo from Lella Boutique. I love Lella Boutique's fabrics and it's really interesting because it's Halloween, but it's not traditional Halloween. So let me just see if I can get it under the close up and peel some of these back. Um, because I saw this and I thought, yeah, this cushion would look great in this. As I said, I've done that with one and a half inch strips, but you could easily alter the size of those. So you could do two inch strips, two and a half inch strips, whichever. But I love these little ghosts with their little rosy cheeks. They're just so sweet, no nothing scary. Um, so you've got all these, so you've got sort of blacks and oranges, but they're not really your, your what we think of as the real traditional Halloween colors because it, she brings in very cleverly these, these lovely pinks and it's just sort of a, a, a muted orange rather than that really sort of vibrant orange. But I want to get to the pinks here, look. So if you can sort of see, there's got this really soft, it's almost like a raspberry pink there. And then there's also, let's peel that one back there. Look at that lovely purple as well. So I think that's just going to make a really nice, and then there's some green to go in with the uh, the background of the pumpkins there. So it's it's Halloween, but it's it's very much a nice sort of softer, um, not sort of feminine Halloween really, but just really lovely. So I think the cushion would look great in those. So that's Hey Boo from Lella Boutique, which yeah, it'd be great to do something in that. Now the other one that caught my eye, because as well as doing that scrap, I've still been working on my pineapple block. So of course I've been doing the very bright, bold colors for that. And we're gonna put a link back to that one for uh, if you haven't seen it. So I've done another four blocks on that this month. So I've now got eight pineapple blocks. And I'm going to do a few each month throughout the year until I've got enough. But look at these. These these would have been fabulous. This is also another new in. Rainbow Spice by Sarah Thomas of Ceridity. So we've got some brilliant greens. Look at that lovely emerald green there. Um, that's sort of more turquoisey blue, uh, sort of a more of a mid blue going into a, a navy and the purples. So my pineapple blocks would look great in this. <laughs> I'm a magpie for, well, all sorts, but I'm a magpie for any sort of colour, really. Um, and my mum, my mum particularly likes all these bright reds, anything with, with any vibrancies and yellows. So absolutely gorgeous and just a really nice chocolate brown at the end there. But these haven't got, these have just got sort of a nice plain print on them. But actually in terms of colour, they're not a flat colour. There's a little bit more to them. There's a little bit more um, sort of depth and texture with the, the designs that are on there. So that's Rainbow Spice. So that, as I said, that would look great for my pineapple blocks. Now the other new in that I spotted was Noah's Ark. And uh, this is Stacey Itsu again. I think we were looking at some of her fabrics last time when we were looking at some new, new ins. And there's really nice soft, um, sort of more sort of children's prints with sort of animals. Um, I love those little raindrops in that aqua blue there. And you've got all the uh, different um, animals on some of these fabrics. Little fishies, little sunshine. I'm just going to, I'm trying to get to the, uh, the yellow. I really love that sort of soft yellow color as well. So that's sort of just three of the fabrics. Now this would also look good in a little baby cushion. Um, so that fabric I thought would be ideal for that. So that's just three of our new ins that I've picked out that I thought would work really well with this scrap project, if you haven't got scrap projects, but that project and also with the pineapple blocks that we've been doing. Now with the Noah's Ark, there is also, um, we do also have that on the bowl and there is also a couple of panels that that comes with. Uh, and one actually makes a baby book and one actually makes Noah's Ark with all the animals that goes in it, which would be really good fun as well, wouldn't it? Now, not to forget, we've also got some fabrics back there. Now, one of them we covered last time, which was the Dandy Duo, and it's very similar colours to the cushion I've been doing. So when I was making that, I was thinking, oh, that Dandy Duo uh, fabric would be absolutely perfect. And we've also got some other um, ditzy prints 
in um, country cuttings. Um, so let's go and have a look at those. So this was the uh, Dandy Duo fabric that we had a look at um, in a previous video and we'll, we'll link that there because we were looking at some of the new in fabrics in that one as well. Um, and when I was doing my Patrick Flowers, these were definitely sort of the colours. And when I think I was looking at this fabric before, I was thinking about sort of th this would be ideal for making some spring projects. Um, and this low volume print here or light, as I call it here, would be perfect for the background. And then you've got the other colours within there, then you could introduce into your nine patch blocks, but then al also for your applique blocks. So, um, as I said, I think we've got that here in... Um, pre-cuts as well as on the bolt here so with these different colours, so lots of different colours in there. I think there's more greens and bits and pieces in there, so you can definitely, that would be a, a lovely springtime cushion. So this was the other fabric range we've got new in as well, Country Cuttings, and it's a Macawa fabric, um, and just lovely, beautiful ditzy florals, so definitely uh, sort of the pink themes there, but also the, the gorgeous yellows and blues. Um, I was going to say, because I'm a bit of a blue magpie, that I'd probably do yellows and blues, but I'm quite liking the freshness of the pinks there as well but this would also look great uh, for lovely springtime, um, any projects, but the cushion we're doing as, as well. So we thought we'd pull those out to show you. So that's uh, country cuttings. So now we've had a look at some other fabrics that we can do this with. Let's actually have a look at how we get on and do this uh, project. Now I'm laughing because I, I drew this flower. I'm not much of an artist. I'm gonna make that disclaimer straight away, but I managed to uh, draw a nice little flower uh, and I will let you into a little secret because of the colour I've chosen, this coral, because, and it's a five-pointed star. When I was making this, um, all that kept going through my head was uh, Patrick from SpongeBob SquarePants. And I, I now call these my Patrick flowers. Um, but I've actually sort of drawn them out. So if you want to make this exact thing, if you want to make your own Patrick flowers, I'll, uh, I'll put a little um, download um, that you can sort of get into that. And also I, I mentioned earlier about the different sizes. I'll tell you what size these squares need to be if you use different size strips. But I'm gonna demo with some one and a half inch strips because I was using my scraps and that's what I wanted to sort of use up. So let's put that to one side and we're gonna start by making these nine patch blocks. So we've done this before. I'm just gonna put that back there. And I'm actually doing a Christmas version here now, and I haven't decided what my little applique um, square is going to be, or I might do some stitchery, you never know, but it might be holly leaves, it might be baubles, I might do stars, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. So I've made a star on some blocks here, as you can see, let's put that one, but you just want some strips. And these are one and a half, <coughs> excuse me, and um, you want to make one strip set where you have two colours with a background in the centre. And then we need to make another strip set, which just has a, I think I'm going to do another one of those. So I've got a bit of variety. So let's, that's looking a bit. And then we're going to make one strip set where we've got the colour in the centre and two strips. And you can see these were little off cuts of something else I was doing. I don't even know what they came from. So we're going to put those together in strip sets and we're just going to sew those with a quarter of an inch. Um, I'm going to just straighten that one off a bit because that's looking a bit wonky up there. So let's do that while I remember. Let's just cut it back to where I know I've got an inch and a half. It goes a bit, it goes a bit wiggly there. So you can see this has come out of my scraps. And it doesn't matter that that's not gone all the way across and then we're going to put those together. So let's take those to the machines. I'm going to put those three together and I'm going to put those three together. So let's go and do that. Now, as you can see, these strips are different lengths. That's okay. As long as they're one and a half inches wide, uh, we'll just get as many cuts out of that as we can. So. Now this is the one I'm going to put the colour on the other side, so I'm just going to finger crease that back for now and put the red on the other side. And the same with this one, but we're going to put white on the background.
So there's our two strip sets and we've given them a good press and now we're going to cut them into one and a half inch uh, pieces. Actually, I was going to get the big ruler, but I think it'd be easier with this smaller one. So I've got this one here as well, just to um, give us a bit of variety. So I'm going to line up, let me put it under the close up so you can see, I'm going to line up one of the lines with the seam line, making sure my one and a half inches is in. And then we're just going to give that a cut and I can flip that round. These are ever so quick. You only need eight for that little cushion. And it turns out uh, 12 inch, 12 inch finished cushion. So let's just. So, so this is really good for using up all those little pieces, or even if you've got one and a half inch squares. Might as well cut another one there, look. It's waiting to be cut. Um, you could easily, let's say there's only eight little blocks you need to do. So, uh, right, let's just set those aside. And cut this one. And you can see I've got all sorts of oddments of fabric in this. But there we are, that one, that's all rubbish. Let's put that down there. So you can see here now, we need that one to go into the center. And then we're going to do, let's do it like that, it looks a bit more balanced with the red going. So we can just make our little line patch. I'm gonna put a middle row onto top row, and then I'll take the bottom row. I'm gonna give a little pin there. But these come together really quickly. So that's take that to the machine and give it a sew. I'm just going to finger press that seam for a minute and just make sure we get this one on the right way like that. That's so small, I'm not even going to pin. Now, because these blocks are quite small, I tend to press this final, these two or two final seams, not one final seam, two final seams open. But I'll just press them in for now. But at home, I've been pressing those open. They, they lay a little bit flatter. Actually, let's just make sure. So there's our little nine patch block. It comes together really quickly. As I said, you've only got eight to do. Now I've got four there made, so I've already got half a cushion. So let's just bring the cushion in actually, and I'll put those to one side to sew later. Should we have a look how we make the flowers? Um, now I've hand stitched these down, but you can of course, you know, machine stitch them. I've done a little hand blanket stitch. Um, and then I've just done a little applique stitch on the uh, flower centers. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. Now I've got one little Patrick flower here left to show you the blanket stitch. Now I have done a little video um, with some hand stitch um, techniques on. So I've got my needle um, and I've actually, this is actually a chenille needle size. It's probably a size 24, I would say. And I've just got one strand of um, embroidery thread. I'd like to do this with embroidery thread. And I'm just going to do a little quilter's knot. So we just wrap the thread around the needle. We hold where we've wrapped and we just pull it through. Now you have to be a bit more careful with this because it's got a bigger eye, but it should go through okay. Now, one thing I will say that you've probably noticed is I've already put a piece of wadding on the back and I don't know how well you can see it on camera, but you can see I'm hand stitching the flowers down through the wadding as well. So that sort of helps to quilt it. But I always put a piece of wadding uh, behind the fronts of my cushions. I, I think it just makes them look a little bit more padded um, and then I'll put a lining in on top. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to come up my first stitch because I ended my thread there. So I'm going to come up right on the outside of that stitch and then I'm going to go over and I'm trying to keep the sort of distance and the length of these stitches about the same. And for this little flower, and then I'm going to put that thread under the needle. Now if I was sat at home, it would look a little bit, yeah, it would be a little bit easier, but you can sort of do it. The other way you can do it is just sort of hold that thread with your thumb and then you're sort of stitching 
with that thread. I'm just making small little stitches. It's a bit hard to do standing up, I think. We'll whiz round. We haven't got much to do, we haven't got very far to go. But I love to do a little uh, blanket stitch. I sit there in the evenings in front of the TV. Sorry, I'm trying to do it so I can hold it, but also so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to keep going round. And I'm just concentrating that needle comes right out on the edge, on the edge of the uh, stitch. So this was put down using um, fusible, uh, uh, I think it was either Bond or Web or Heat and Bond, something like that. Um, paperback fusible, double sided. But you could, of course, you know, if you like to do um, needle turn or a turned edge method, you could, or as I said, you can sew these on by your machine. But I like to do a little bit of hand stitching. I find it very therapeutic, very calming. So I'm almost there, a couple of more stitches. And one more stitch. Actually two. I'm gonna do one in the side and just one in that little Center valley of the flower right there. And then that's that flower on. Now I just take my needle through to the back and I'm just going to knock that thread off. And do my little square knot. So I did a bit fast there. Shall I do that again? So what I do with the square knot is you put one thread one direction and the bottom of thread in the other direction and then pull and then I tend to just travel my needle away just through the the wadding so I'm not snipping right near that knot so I don't accidentally snip that knot and then that's done so let's put that somewhere where we don't lose the needle so that's the blanket stitch down so let's move on to do the little button centers. Now I did have a think about actually putting buttons on, but I thought actually if somebody does sit on it, you don't necessarily want buttons in your back. Now eight, you need eight flowers. So it's eight, nine patches and eight flowers for this. So with the flowers, I actually did find a button because that was about the right size. And I've got a little scrap of fabric here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw around that button to get my circle or my rough circle. And these can be very, really rough. Now I've just got these little, they may not be the right scissors. Let's get a slightly bigger pair of scissors. And I'm just going to trim in a circle-ish shape, leaving myself quite a nice gap around that circle. And I use that button, it's actually slightly bigger than I need it to be. I'm not gonna worry that there's a little bite out of that there. I'm just gonna round that off a little bit more. So I'm just going to make that little shape like that. And then I'm going to grab myself a piece of cotton. Now, if you've got a sew all thread, it tends to be a bit stronger for this, but I'm just going to use this bit of cotton. So I'm going to do my little knot at the end again here. Oh. This cotton's very uh, coily come off the spool that was on the machine. I think it's a new spool though, so. But it'll be fine, it's the right color. I just want something that's gonna blend into the background. Now on this one, I'm just gonna do a running stitch and all that is, and I'm just gonna make tiny little stitches. Now, the rule of thumb with this is, the smaller you can make these little stitches as you go around the outside, the sort of better curve you'll get on your, if you do giant stitches, you'll end up with sort of points. So I'm just going to do these little stitches. And I've changed my needle. I've actually, I'm actually using now, um, it's one of the little needles I use when I'm doing applique and it's a, a clover black gold. Um, and I use them when I'm using, uh, when I'm doing my English paper piecing as well. They're really nice, it's fine, sharp, but it's got quite a small eye. I think, I don't know what size this is. This might be a, 
a 9 or a 10. But my thread's nice and long because we want to go all the way around, but I'm also going to use this same thread to uh, stitch this down. Oh. Almost round. When I get back to where we started, I can see my knot. Now I've cut these little circles out of, um, they're actually scraps of fusible fleece because I'm going to put that in. So I'm going to have a little bit more of a three dimensional shape. And then I've got a little cardboard uh, square, which I think is an inch. Oh no, three quarters of an inch. I wrote on it in pencil. I think the inch was a bit too small. And then we're just going to pull and just pull carefully. Because I say, if I was using a sewal thread, you can tug on it a bit harder. But you can see there, we're just using that to create the shape. And once I've got it there, now you can take that to the iron and give it a bit of a press, but just be careful if you've used a fusible that you're not getting the glue anywhere. But I just tend to use just the heat of my fingers and just go around the edge to help it. And then once it's gone round, I'm just going to open it up a little bit and just take the cardboard shape out, but leave the piece of wadding in there. And then once it's gone into that shape, you can sort of form it quite easily back into the shape. Now, we're going to put this down. Now we can put a pin in it. And I'm just going to position that. And you can see where my thread has come out. And it's there. So I'm just going to put a pin there and then I'm just going to go around with a, um, a slip stitch. And all the slip stitches is you go into the background and then you just want to come out right on that fold. And as I go around, I just make sure I'm getting a nice shape. If I've got any bits, I'm actually going to take that pin out. Now I've got a stitch in there and just hold it with my thumb. And I just use my, the tip of my needle just to smooth out the edges, just give it a nice shape. And I'm just going to do some nice little stitches. And I'm just going to keep going round until that's all sewn down. So I've done my bit of homework uh, and finished sewing that on. So now it's all ready. I'm going to give that a little bit of a trim. I'll put a lining on the inside and then I'll probably just make a little envelope back for it. But I really like these cushions because like I say, you can make one for all the different seasons, for the holidays, whatever. And I like cushions because once you've taken the pad out, they're really small. It takes up a, a tiny, tiny space. So you can swap these out. And like I say, they come together really quickly. Um, use up a little bit of your scraps and they're quite fun to do. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you give it a go. And if you do, please do share your videos, uh, sorry, your photos with us by um, tagging us on social media. Uh, but you can also send them in to us here, direct sales at sewingstudio.co.uk. I'm sure that information will be in the description as well. As I said, I'll put together a little um, freebie download. So if you want to have a little go at, at doing this flower, and also for the different sizes you need for the different width strips. Um, I'll put all that information in a little download and that will be available for you as well. So thank you for spending some time here with us again today. And I hope you'll join me here next time in the sewing studio.